This is Thad Starner. Today we're going to talk about power. Well, power is basically energy usage per second. And in the units we're going to be using, uh, we'll be using watts. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. So joule is the unit of energy, watt is the unit of power. In this class, we're almost always going to be talking about power. Now, why do we care about power? Well, because we don't want to use components that are rated for too little power, because otherwise they might catch fire, for example. So let me give an example. Suppose I have a battery, and the battery I'm going to use is a standard Sony camcorder battery, which is about 7.2 volts nominal. And I'm going to use a resistor here that is 10 ohms. Now how much power is this resistor going to consume when I put across the battery? Well, let's take a look. Oops, excuse me, that is a 17, sorry, an 18 ohm resistor. I need a 10 ohm. There's my 10 ohm. Okay, so we know that current, or I, is equal to voltage over resistance, or in this case, 7.2 volts over 10 ohms, which is equal to 0.72 amps. Well, how much power is that? Well, we know power is equal to voltage times amperage. In this case, 7.2 times 0.72 amps, 7.2 volts times 0.72 amps, which is approximately equal to about 5 uh, watts. Okay, well I happen to know that this resistor and most resistors of this size are about quarter watt. So what happens when I put in about 20 times too much power into this system? Well, let's do the experiment and find out. Now, first of all, let me actually show you that I have a 7.2 volt battery. Actually, it's going to read high because it's, it's fully charged, so it's reading around 7.9. And I'll show you that I actually have a 10 ohm resistor here. Again, that's brown, black, black. The gold and red are tolerances. There we go, 10 ohms. Now, let's see what happens. And we lit the magic smoke out. Now this is a bad idea. Don't inhale this. So, actually, we are literally catching fire. Ah. Ah. Okay, so that was a bad idea. Matter of fact, if I look at this thing, clearly it was quite, got quite hot. It's cooling off quickly now. But, you know, given that the ambient temperature is around 75 degrees here, this thing got to burning heat pretty quickly. Ouch. Yeah, so that was a bad idea. So if I actually needed to have a 10 ohm resistor, uh, what would I do? Well, first of all, why would I ever want a 10 ohm resistor for a battery like this? Well, here's an example. This is a toaster oven. Right, so what is a toaster oven? A toaster oven is a big resistor inside. We'll actually demonstrate this. This is the toaster oven we use for our reflow soldering. So I'm going to hook up it to the to my system here. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, it's on the stay on. That was off. I put it stay on here. There we go. So we see that this is about 12 ohms of resistance. Not too far from what we had. This is what cooks your food normally, right? So you know when I plug this into a 120 volt AC, um, this thing's going to get very warm inside. Well, I can make a toaster oven out of uh, any power source and a resistor. The thing is that, that the toaster oven has a resistor in it that's designed for that sort of heat. Well, this resistor here, 
Let me get this one. This is a uh, ceramic resistor and it's one ohm and it's designed for up to 25 watts. Well, can I actually use this for my demonstration right now? Let's look again. So I equals V over R, 7.2 volts over one ohm, which equals 7.2 amps. P equals VI, which equals 7.2 volts times 7.2 amps, which is probably equal to 50 watts. Oh my, this is gonna to be too big, I can't, they're too small. Even this big ceramic hunk won't take the heat of uh, the battery, of what this battery could push through it. Okay, well here's a different one, here's another ceramic one. This one is 10 ohms at 6.5 watts. Hey, that looks okay. Before it was at 5 watts, so we know we're putting 5 watts in, so this thing's actually rated to take the type of abuse that we want to give it. So here's an interesting question. If I actually use this resistor in a circuit, so let's do it here, then let's measure its initial temperature. It's around 74 degrees or so. Put my battery here. And now let's watch it go up. 80, 82, 85, 89, 91, 93, 95, 97. This is Fahrenheit, 100, Fahrenheit 102, 105. But notice this thing is actually designed to take this as not burning up, it's not smoking like before. Now, it's rare you actually want to use a resistor of this size in everyday electronics. Matter of fact, given this is a lithium ion battery, it has a protection circuitry in it that generally keeps it from putting too much power in. It turns out it's fine for this. Oh, we can even start smelling the thing getting hot. But it's still fine, it's getting up to 100, 180, 190, 200. It's going to get up to, to boiling here in a second. Now, I'm going to move that off the table. Ooh, and my, you can see that even my battery has raised its temperature slightly above ambient, which is kind of cool, or hot in this case. Um, so, one of the things we want to do is choose always the size, both the ohmage, the resistance of our resistor, but also the size of the resistor. For example, let's look at one other thing here. Let's look at this guy. This is a, this here, red, red, brown. So this is a 220 ohm resistor. If we put that in, its, in this place, so let's see here. I equals V over R, which equals 7.2 volts over 220 ohms, which equals what? Ooh, I gotta think about this. So this is about 1 30th of an amp. So power equals V times I, 7.2 volts times about a 30th of an amp, which equals, let's see here, that's about, oh, 200. 225 uh, milliwatts. Hmm. Let's see, I'm sorry to divide that. So, point 0.2, that's well, about point 0.2, point 0.3. Uh, let's see here, I have to do that calculation quick. 7.2 into 30 to point 0.2, 60, 1200. Yes, yeah, so this is about point 0.24 watts. Point 0.24 watts. Very good. So now, let's see here. If I put this across the battery, now I have a note that this size resistor can take about half a watt. Doesn't mean it's not gonna get warm. So I'm gonna put that here, and again, it was ambient temperature to begin with, and we can see it's getting slightly warmer, but since this was designed to handle it, we're only about 78 degrees here, it's doing just fine. There's 80. Right? So this thing can actually handle the load. Now this is more of what you'd be doing in everyday life. Um, just using a resistor that's designed for the amount of current, amount of power you need.